Red Band coming to you live from the world famous comedy store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hensclue. Yeah, here we are again, live from the world famous Brian Red Band. How are you? Sir? Hey, how's it going, Tony? Good, good to be here. Happy to be here at the comedy store yes. yet again for another episode of Kill Tony. We have a fun show lined up for you, as always. We just ate some delicious Vito's pizza, and uh, I'm very excited to have that in my belly. Um, the great Ryan J. Ebelt is here, ladies and gentlemen, yes. drawing tonight's episode live from right here at the Comedy Store. Uh, I'm all jacked up on amazing caveman coffee. Me too. Got to get that new... Uh, New tea they got. That's so yep. good. The hibiscus yes. tea. Put it over some ice and kicks it up to a whole nother level. You can get all that at cavemancoffeeco.com. Type in the promo code Kill Tony. Save some money. RyanJEbelt.com has every print available of Kill Tony ever. And it's also being auctioned off as of late. So follow him on social media at RyanJEbelt. So yeah, exciting, exciting stuff. Brian Redban. Mm -hmm. A lot of wild stuff happening. Good job uh, on the fight companion, man. Yeah. I, that was a great episode. You and Joey Diaz. Very exciting to fill in for the uh, COVID brothers. Yeah. Brendan and Brian Callen. Because Brian Callen's almost dead. Yeah. <laughs> it affects the people in that age range very 70, deeply. 75, yeah. Yeah. So they were doing meet and greets after some shows in Texas. <laughs> Meathead and greets, perhaps, is what it could be called. Meathead and greet heads, <laughs> perhaps we could call it. Um, but, uh, yeah, now's a good time to not do meet and greets. No doubt. I mean, cause just going to Texas alone is pretty dangerous. You know, if you want to get a photo with your favorite comedian, now's a good time to learn how to Photoshop. Yeah. You know, just put yourself in there. You can you and your favorite comedian right in front of Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Or uh, perhaps <laughs> like perhaps uh, perhaps an ocean or perhaps a, um, you know, you really have a Stonehenge behind you. Yeah. You could do it in Zoom. You yeah. I have a picture of me and George Carlin outside of the comedy store. Wow. Yeah. That's great. I got a recent picture with Robin Williams. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, exciting stuff. And uh, as always here on Kill Tony, we always have the coolest sponsors. And I am so excited to talk about this one tonight oh, yes. because our newest sponsor, Lucy Nicotine, is a company founded by former smokers like us who are finally making tobacco alternatives that don't suck. It's 2020. Get rid of your cigarettes. Unplug your vape. Throw out your tins of dip and go get some Lucy nicotine gum or lozenges that actually taste great. Now, I still vape sometimes, but I've cut way back thanks to Lucy nicotine gum. And as you know, I used to smoke cigarettes continuously up until two years ago. Um, and my, both of my parents smoked when I was growing up. My dad's still a heavy smoker at 72. Um, and uh, it just runs through my blood, man. They, I'm sure they were both smoking when they made me, when they were banging it out. So I have nicotine uh, uh, deprivation just in my blood. So the nicotine means a lot to me, and Lucy Gum is a fun way to get it through my system, healthier, better way. Yeah, you know, it's almost like a habit thing. You're constantly wanting to fidget or do something with your mouth. And, you know, those jewels, I'm always constantly puffing on it, and I don't need to. The great thing about this gum is it tastes great, and once you have it in your mouth, you just kind of chew it once in a while, and it just kills all cravings. Mm -hmm. I love it. I used to not be able to eat or chew this gum because of the taste, and this tastes amazing. I have yep. the uh, the wintergreen. Yeah, I have the cinnamon. Yeah. It is unbelievable. It is incredible. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month so 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 simple it's 2020 lucy has delivery down this is the real deal use the promo code kill tony and you will get your first trial order of gum or lozenges at the lowest price they're allowed by law to charge you the government has rules against giving nicotine away for free the team at lucy is working with us at uh and our partners to get you your first trial order of gum for right around a dollar and lozenges at two dollars Go to lucy.co, use promo code KILLTONY at checkout, and get rid of your old cigarettes or vape today. There you go. And, uh, and so it continues. Another episode of Kill Tony, live from the Comedy Store, begins now. We have four pre-selected sign-ups in the bucket um, recommendations from people close to the store and... Uh, and, and uh, 
and uh, one new comedian and one that we met during the quarantine that we said should come to the comedy store and sign up when things get back and they are back so we're going to meet them tonight however um, before we get to the bucket ladies and gentlemen there is a band on this show every week they commit to being different characters we never know what they're going to be and what they're going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I do present to you right now the best stand band in the land. It is the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Jetski Jesse Johnson, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, and Chroma Chris. <laughs> Jetski Johnson. I'm so excited about this. This is the first time we've had all four band members in over four months. I know. Can you believe Welcome that? Welcome back, Jesse. Incredible. We're all perfectly spaced out, a perfect six feet uh, apart, and we are back. What's your name, head flight attendant? My name's Gavin, but you can call me whatever you want. Gavin? Gavin, yeah. Gavin, okay. And... Uh, and this young lady, hello, how are you? Hello, I want to thank you for flying Kill Tony. <laughs> uh, my name's Sandra. I want to remind you in the unlikely chance that we do crash, that Red Band can be used as a flotation device. <laughs> I love it. And, this, uh, this just in, we can also use Tony because he is also full of hot air. Oh, there you go. Very good. Absolutely. And uh, what's your name, little uh, Mexican uh, blonde Excuse boy? Excuse me, my name's Dylan, and I'm here to serve hot nuts. Okay, very good. I'm being informed that my name is actually Daryl right now, so it's Daryl. Wow, those that high elevations getting, getting to his head. That's right. And how about you, uh, bass player? Oh, hey Tony, my name is Chris with a K. I'm the uh, I'm the lead bartender on the plane. <laughs> okay, I've been stealing for years. Oh my <laughs> goodness! All right, well. Okay, we have flight attendants here tonight, Southwest flight attendants. I'm very excited about this, and uh, let's have some fun, shall we? You guys want to grab your instruments? Because we're about to get this party started right now, and we're getting it started with a bang. Normally, this guy uh, is what we would consider in the business a closer. However, we're going to have some fun tonight and get the episode started with him. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my favorite human beings on the planet, the dark lord of regulars in the history of Kill Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Michael Lair, everybody. Here we go. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lehrer, everyone. Here we go. I will. <laughs> You're off here. Got to move up. There we go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's very important, <laughs> that part. <laughs> there we go. All right. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lehrer. Time for the delay. Oh, Sports Illustrated just had their first transgender swimsuit model. She got the job by beating the death the other models by using her manpower. Holly Berry said she won't play a transsexual. Hopefully she plays that waitress again who gets a doggy from Billy Bob Thornton. That was hot as fuck and she won an Oscar. Dance with the partner you brought to the party. Speaking of party, Shout out to Goban Medicated Powder for making my boys feel like they can lick all day. Lumi 
living in the moment. No regrets. One regret. I wish my generation had as much passion as this generation for eating an ass. Man, the band sounds great tonight. Little yes. Ace of Spades yeah. from Motorhead with our very own Motorhead himself, Michael Lair, getting things kick-started here. Yeah, tonight. that was awesome. Even better than the band, the fucking audience. The audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, the audience rocks. I love you guys. Heck Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah, Michael fully hallucinating that there's an audience in the room right yeah. now. This is exciting. That ALS medicine must be fucking bumping oh right now. Oh man, this is so good. I buy it in an <laughs> alley and it's awful, bro. <laughs> you get your ALS medicine in an alleyway? Yeah. Wow. Well, that's Medicaid. Oh, okay. You know, HMO. <laughs> HMO. <laughs> I noticed you have a like a spray bottle. Is that for your nurse slash girlfriend or No, um because of my over my disease I get overheated a oh. lot. Uh, oh, oh God. look at that. That's fucking hot. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Was that was sexual. <laughs> Thank you. Um yeah. But uh, <laughs> I've been working on my physical therapy because the thing is I can't walk, but I can stand. So I'm working on d standing for a set, and I'm in crazy good shape. Hold on. Oh, shit. Are you about to yeah. try to stand I'm up right stand. now? No, oh. I'm fine. Oh, fuck. I mean, no, I'm fine. I got water socks on. Oh, okay. Water what socks. are water socks exactly? They so I know. <laughs> 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 what could those be? <laughs> you just spray. That's that's what the water socks are for in case he, uh, he collects in yeah. his socks. In case so he sprays. I don't slip in the shower. Oh, water socks. Michael, are you purposely wearing your glasses like Weekend at Bernie's right now? <laughs> yeah. Weekend at Bernie's was my comedy inspiration. Because I knew I'd be dead before I became, before I finished being a comedian. <laughs> how long are we allowed to do that to your body after you pass away? We're going to weekend to Bernie's you. Uh, how long? Like, we get like two months with your corpse or something? Well, it depends on what Patreon you signed up for. Oh, okay. Yeah, what's the f what's I the like yeah, that. Oh, I got you, fuckers. I like that. Hey, I'm sharp as a tax, though. All right, let me stand. You are, you are sharper than tax day. You are right. Yeah. Hey, proofing. <laughs> All right. Wow. I want to improvise and want to stand up a joke. So give me a suggestion. You wanted to do what? A, su uh, a suggestion? Yeah. Uh, I improvise a, a stand-up joke. Okay, a Jewish uh, deli. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, how about those Jewish delis all closed now because of Corona? Hey, if you hate the Jews, the Chinese the fucking virus took care of them for you. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> wow, we got to see what fucking level 30 second city gets you right there. That is some of the best <laughs> that's some of the best improv I've ever seen in my life. Fuck you, Jewish delis. <laughs> that is a big fuck you. COVID took care of them, didn't hey. they? I um I recently heard from my doctors. Uh -huh. They think that maybe I should go for testing, but I might not have ALS. I might just be an alcoholic drug addict. Oh, that, yeah. That so would be cross your fingers. Yeah, I will. I will. Cru I will definitely crush my fingers. And uh, <laughs> oh, 
No, yeah. I'm doing cool. <laughs> uh, magic. I learned magic. You learned how to do magic? Yeah, during quarantine. Can I show you? Oh, please. If you're going to do a magic trick right now, I'm going to lose my mind. Oh, the band like... <laughs> you want some Ace of Spades Motorhead? It seems uh, like that. Yeah, whatever. All right, All here right. we go. Here we go. Here we go. like to gamble, you gotta know the name. You win some, lose some, it's all the same to me. Yeah. 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 All right. Oh, here he goes. Oh, it's happening. That is. Oh, is that, shit. That is toilet paper? Oh, no. It's a, He's making that come out of his penis, I do oh, believe. God, it's coming is that hard. Oh this my is my God. favorite magic trick I've ever seen. This is... This is co- clearly a side effect of ALS. <laughs> you can't spell balls without ALS. <laughs> that is an incredible magic trick. It seems as though he's pulling <laughs> uh, white plastic out of his penis, which the craziest part of this magic trick is that his hand is covering his penis and he still has his pants on. So it's crazy. It's going through... His pants, and <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there it is. There that it is, and he did it all while laughing very hard. And most magicians uh, don't laugh that hard during their own tricks, but uh, but Tony, yeah, D- Chroma Chris said, "Is that his hospital bill receipt?" <laughs> Chroma Chris. I'm putting, he deserves this. I'm going to put this in the middle now. Oh my God. That is so fucking funny. My God, you are a man of so many talents, Michael Lair. It is absolutely incredible. Now you can add comedy, improv, magic to it. And Uh, uh, you're doing uh, something with film as well, right? Yeah, I'm entering a film competition that's not tomorrow. And they give you suggestions. Like Top Chef, you know, like you have a boomerang and an apple. <laughs> what did they suggest to you, Jewish Deli? Yeah, and uh, you want this one person in your film has to be rid- <laughs> Has to be what? <laughs> Disabled. Disabled. Yeah. Oh, okay. You no, know, I'm not doing monologue. But I'm gonna cross these fucking disabled filmmakers. Yeah, what do you do? You, do you have an idea what you're gonna do? No, they give you the oh, suggestion you. Oh. tomorrow. That's even better. Wow. Talk about wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. That's all you. So you're gonna do a monologue tomorrow? No, I I'll get the suggestion of what to make the film about tomorrow, and then I'll have like four days. To make the film, and it's for Easter Seal, and then there'll be an industry panel, and when I win, I'll tell them all to go fuck themselves. Yeah. yeah. What is dude. the prize? Do you get like a cure or something? Yeah, you yeah. get a milk cook cure. You fucking <laughs> fun. <laughs> fun. And that's for uh, that. That's for Easter Seals. Yeah. <laughs> Easter seals? <laughs> <laughs> Tony! Tony! <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Wow, somebody's really on their game today. <laughs> I was laughing. So let's talk about that set a little bit. Were you talking about. I, I got. I, I, I got. I lost a part in a second. You were talking about Angelina Jolie? No, um, Holly Berry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I missed miss that part. <laughs> <laughs> I caught back up at Gold Bond Powder, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was using Gold Bond recently, and, yeah. and I, I guess my balls got so sweaty that it just made like a, like a, a dough. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> completely fucking disgusting. Our barf bag's at your seat. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Vito's Pizza. Oh <laughs> Go get your Vito's Pizza and the fresh dough. <laughs> oh, oh, my man. God. When you uh, Do you put the gold bond on yourself or you have someone do that for you? You know. The, you put that on yourself. I picture, mm. I picture your balls just look like uh, the table from Scarface, just a big white pile oh of fucking yeah, powder. Man. It's fucking nice. 
I pilot up. <laughs> I have a like thousand dollar monthly gold bond button. <laughs> you have a thousand dollar monthly robot button? Gold bond button. <laughs> oh, gold bond, gold bond budget. I thought you said a robot button. Hey, maybe I should sit up and speak clearly. <laughs> yeah, no, you're doing good. This is great. I love, All right. I love the look. I love everything that's uh, yes. going on here. So now that I know it was Halle Berry. Uh, yes. Um, what, what did you say again? I said Halle Berry is turned down a role that play a transgender person. And I hope instead... She plays that ba- waitress again, who is the doggy from Billy Bob Thornton, because it was hot as fuck, and she won an Oscar. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then when you say this generation eating ass yeah. better than our generation, you yeah. th- so like you're talking about the people that are kids now? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't see, I don't, I, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. What do you mean? Well, I mean, it just... They're already doing it, Tony. Are they're they? are already eating each other's asses. I feel like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like this future generation, they're, they're being raised with iPads and things like that. Yeah, with a bunch of pictures of ass eating, and now they're all trying it. I don't know what the kids are doing nowadays. <laughs> they're eating ass. They are. How they do are. you know this? Because I used to date younger people. Wow, <laughs> look at this. You got a little fucking little bit of that Delia right through Delia. your veins. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think it's true because uh, they, they're watching the, all the craziest porn now. You know, like yeah. the kids aren't wa- looking at Playboys. They're you looking know what? At You're fisting. absolutely right. That's a really good point. Ass eating's like just fucking, that's first base for them. Yeah, now. ass eating is the new missionary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. I wonder what's next. I wonder what, 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 I wonder what the, like, where do we go from here? If they're desensitized to that level. How's it going out in the parking lot, Mike? Everything's good? Two thumbs up. Sure. Shout out to the audience yes. that's live in the parking lot right now joining us. Uh, it is wild times here at the Comedy Store during this this uh, new normal, they're calling it. The, um, the people are calling it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Michael, uh, you eat ass and you've had your ass eaten, is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> Which one do you prefer the most, eating ass or having your ass eaten? I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> modern day, modern day Michael Lair getting your ass eaten, I'd imagine there has to be a little bit of cleaning that goes on before. Well, yeah. Tony, I don't know if you I noticed, but when he stood up, there was a hole cut out in the seat of his chair. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I won my ass eaten once. <laughs> never again. Why? Why never again? You didn't like it? No. What, 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 what did it do for you? Nothing. If it did something, I like would it. invite him more. I just yeah. noticed something Michael does. I've never noticed before. He, when he, a lot of times he has his hand out, just like uh, Yoda from the uh, Millennium. Yeah, he's got the, the force. The, yeah, the, yeah, the little baby Yoda when he puts his hand out. Mm-hmm. wow i actually felt something when you did that i felt a little tingle oh my whoa i'm your leader (laughs) my god that is incredible (laughs) do it one more time hold on hold on one second wait hold on give us a second okay do it one more time with your hand i'm your leader give me money whoa (laughs) <laughs> Can't really hear the sound effect. Oh, okay. He's not doing it anymore. None of this is working. Stop, stop, stop. Everybody stop. Um, Michael, anything else <laughs> before we let you go? He's <laughs> making a funny face. Right I now. don't know. I mean, I'm thinking one more. <laughs> Red Rover, Red Rover. I think it went all right. I hate when I don't talk clear because I'm not drunk or too high. When, um, the laughing is because of the disease. So um, you take it easy. <laughs> we love you. We wouldn't change a goddamn thing. Thank you. I love you guys. Michael lights out Lair, everybody. There we go. Wow.
That's a way to get the party started here tonight with the beautifully great comedy stylings of Michael Lair. Everyone loves that. There's a little switch to the batting order for you tonight. Um, starting out with our cleanup hitter, our power hitter, right from the get. We have some uh, wacky sign-ups tonight. I'm excited to see what happens here. A lot of new faces. Um, are the comedians that are in the bucket actually in here? They are. Uh, a couple are in uh, the back there, and uh, the others are outside, patiently awaiting. Okay, their there's a, like a 20-second delay out there. Oh, well, <laughs> whatever happens, happens. Right. But your first comedian, we met him over the quarantine. This guy is a roast battle extraordinaire. This is one of my favorite roast battlers. Uh, he's probably already on his way to the stage if there's a 20-second delay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is definitely uh, one of our favorite people that we met over the quarantine. A true California native, the one, the only, Los Digits, everyone, for his first time... Live in the main room of the comedy store. I'll be back again, leaving on a jet plane. Yeah. Here he comes. Los. Digits, everybody. Here he is. Right there. Right there. Right there. Hey, what's up? Fool? Here he is. One more time for Los Digits. What's up, fool? <laughs> Should I start my minute now? As you can tell, I'm Mexican as fuck. Yeah. Us Mexicans don't really keep jobs, man. We got a lot of fucking jobs, but we don't really seem to hold them. See, I've been a fucking working at a taco truck out here in L.A. It's, uh, it's hard out here in L.A. to keep a fucking job, man, because in L.A., man, you got to be skilled on some weird ass shit, man. I got fired for not flipping tortillas, right? And that's kind of like a fucking disrespect to my own fucking family, man, because I was raised born. Uh, I was raised doing the tortilla bit, you know, I was fucking a tortilla flipper for ages, man. When this bitch told me not to flip a tortilla, she said to go home. I said, what the fuck, bitch? How do you not know how to flip a tortilla? See, I don't know if there's a tortilla college out there that's teaching this kind of shit, man, but I want to be informed because when I flip tortillas, man, see, it's a long bit about tortillas because, see, I got my heart filled on tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of shit, you know, a lot of compassion when it comes to tortillas, man. And I hate cats, man. There you go. Low digits with 60 seconds and a little bit of change. Stay right there, Digits. We're going to uh, interview you now. Yeah, that man, set was incredibly <laughs> Mexican. That was so Mexican. That made Joel Jimenez look like a blonde flight attendant named <laughs> Daryl. That's how Mexican that was. A lot of tortillas in that set. Yeah, man. I fucked it up. I was going to do some other shit, but I was in a... Uh Feeling it. I like it. Is that a true story? Yeah, it's a true story, you man. Got I got fired because you wouldn't flip the tortilla. Because I didn't know how to flip a tortilla right, man. And how that kind of bummed me out. I mean, uh, the right With way, your bare I guess. Hand? I, no, I was doing it the right way, man. I was working at a taco truck in downtown LA, man. And what did they, they, they what did they tell you that you well, were supposed that, to do use something? Now that I was slow, man, and I was like, what the fuck? Oh. What's the what's the science behind this? Dog? Like, ain't no science, man. I was fucking fast as fuck. Is that what you? I feel like you wore that inside the taco truck, <laughs> sunglasses, ball cap. Yeah, well, that's pretty much why they kicked me out too. <laughs> I don't care. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's up though, Tony? Everything's good, dude. I'm excited to have you on the show. Yeah, I actually wrote, man, but I wasn't feeling the biz, so I just fucking You know what? It's it. good. Sometimes you got to call audibles and whatnot. What are you sipping on there? You got a little bit of Oh man, that $5 beer, dog. So I can uh, five Wow, what are they selling the for $5? Store. Coors Light, fool. Am I getting paid for this? Wow. 5 Hell bucks yeah, beer, dude. man. Go get some. Coors Light. My goodness, $5 yeah, only for a drink at the comedy Keg store. originally opened in February. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. That's incredible. They are turning $4.99.5 profit per every cup that they is. sell. It wants to sell to my cousin up there, dog. Look at her. There he is. Him. Joel, uh, have you ever met Los Digits before? You guys are both Mexican. You probably slept in the same car at some point exactly. or Exactly. How did you know that, Tony? <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Respect. Sorry, I farted. <laughs> uh, digits. Uh, what's your uh, living situation during this quarantine? I mean, I'm staying alive, dog. Yeah. How, w- you live by yourself? Yeah. Well, right now I'm in downtown LA, dog. But uh-huh. I'm flying like back and forth, dog, because I'm like. Just working out there in the valley, in the Coachella Valley, you know, staying out there with my brother and then coming back to downtown. That's cool. But I'm here for a couple days now, so. What's your brother do? My brother, he's a fucking IT or some shit. Oh, he has a pretty good pad, yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, I'm just chilling out there. You have a girlfriend right now? Nah, man, not at the moment. Hell no. Well, well, well. (laughs) (laughs) Uh But I like that guy, though. Can I get those digits? (laughs) (laughs) Ha ha, you can get some. This is Gavin. He's a gay flight attendant. (laughs) Who's Oh, he's gay? No, never mind. (laughs) <laughs> uh oh, Gavin, what would you do to digits if you had a chance? With I would it? rip open his phone book. <laughs> oh my Ooh. goodness! And in Spanish, we call them tramputos. <laughs> tramputos. <laughs> Tramputo. <laughs> I love that. So, uh, how about uh, how about your love life? What's that been looking like, digits? I mean, it's all right, dog. You know, I get some here and there. You on like the dating sites or something Fuck like no, that? No, dog. I'm on the real life shit. Dog. Real life. Oh uh, yeah. What do you do when you go up to a girl? Like, what's your opening uh, pickup line? What's up, fool? <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Sometimes you got to talk down to him. Let him know who's boss. Call him a fool right away. Yeah, yeah. Third word. Yeah, you can't let him have that high horse, fool. Come on. <laughs> Somehow you're harder to understand than Michael Lair. I love it. <laughs> hey, can I do my uh, improv? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you are. I I'm think, just kidding. I think we already are. <laughs> Can I get it. a suggestion? I heard tortilla. Okay, I'll go with that. You want to hear the tortilla bit again? <laughs> it's about <laughs> flipping tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, digits, you ever get in trouble with the police? Yeah, man, a couple times. Uh, yeah, like uh, I used for to what? be a graffiti writer. Oh, that's right. I talked to that's you about this. That's where digits came from. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You have uh, you ever do any famous graffiti that we could see around town? You you, you ever draw like Kobe Bryant or anything like that? Uh, no, nah, I never knew that. Dog. I don't know, but I've read it on billboards. You've probably seen them before. Yeah, yeah, nah, I, think, I so. think so. During the during the looting a few months ago, I think I saw some of your work. Yeah, I got shoes for sale too, man. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> I love it, bro. What else about you? What else do you do? You know any magic tricks or anything like that? Do I know magic tricks? What the fuck? Nah. Yeah. Do you know? Do you have any like special skills or talents? Yeah, actually, I used to do magic when I was a kid and shit. Yeah. Do you have a twenty on you or a hundred? No. Only works with those. <laughs> no. It only works with like high amount of money. Oh. Yeah. No change. <laughs> no, I don't have anything. That's fun, dude. That's yeah. exciting. What kind of car do you have? Uh, Camry dog, two thousand and something. <laughs> two thousand and something. I'm not a mechanic. Why I just look like one dog? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to fix cars. If it, if something happened to it, what would you do? You fucking call triple A dog. <laughs> I would not expect people to think you look like a mechanic. <laughs> the way you look like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You call triple A a lot? Nah, hell no, dog. My car is good. Uh-huh. I just have it for backup. You feel me? Yeah, absolutely. Have you modded out your car at all? Have you had a done? I any? mean, not. Uh, you got. Not, like I added the seats that drop lower. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's just a little engine. You got like neons inside your interior. Nah, man, I don't, I'm not a raver. Uh-huh. <laughs> not a raider. <laughs> raper. Oh, what? A raver, fool. Uh-huh. A raider. raider. You know, raider. you're a fan of the raiders, right? <laughs> the raiders? Yeah, I love the raiders. And dog. the Dodgers. The Dodgers too, dog. Just not the Dodger dogs, fool. They're Dodgers, too long, fool. They're, the Raiders. You no like homo. the Diaz <laughs> brothers? Those are your favorite fighters. Oh yeah, fuck the Diaz brothers. I fucks with them. Name another not, sport. Yeah. This is my talent. You name a sport, I could tell you digits. Favorite athlete. All right, every dog. Sport. Here, I, I'll give you one, dog. Golf is a hard one. Soccer, fool. Soccer. I'm gonna go with Mexico. The whole team. Yeah, <laughs> nailed <laughs> it. That's good, dog. Uh, this damn. is my. <laughs> Very few special skills and talents. If I was a guest My on skill Kill is being Tony, racist. <laughs> oh, there, oh, yeah. Okay. Say that. <laughs> there you go. Um, I, you know, if I was on the show and somebody asked me what my special skills or talents would be, I would say that I could tell you any uh, of Digit's favorite athletes. That's a pretty good talent to know because I don't know that shit either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to get your number right now. So. I love it. You get an interview and shit. I'll let them know that I you know more about me. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, do you sleep with something like a teddy bear or a I special sleep with pillow? The, I sleep with the pit bull real tight. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I fucking knew something American in my pit gut bull. made me ask this question. <laughs> you are like a uh, you are a caricature of a wild Los Angeles Mexican man. You sleep with a pit bull. What's the pit bull's name? Yeah, it's actually Bud, but. See, I named him Bud, but now I became Buddy because... <laughs> he sleeps with the rapper Pitbull. <laughs> because uh, I named him Bud just because, you know, weed, you know? Uh-huh. And then I was just like my little buddy, so I just called him Buddy, fool. Oh. We yeah, <laughs> you brought him here? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> just looking for him. <laughs> That's my other time, fool. I can bark like a dog, fool. Did Bud... Does Buddy... Is Buddy good with other dogs? You ever take him to the dog park? No, nah, I mean, he's good when he grabs him by the neck, you know? He's oh, good. Jesus. Yeah. I feel like this is a bad dog. Does he wear the same sunglasses that you do? No, nah, he has his own. <laughs> I buy him his own shit, dog. Come on, fool. Digits, I love you, man. You you are you are uh you are hilarious. You are a serious man. No, I'm not that serious, fool. All right, fool. Well, fool. <laughs> I love you, fool. Love you too, dog. Ladies and gentlemen, no that huh? is Digits live from Kill Tony and the main room of the comedy store. Hey, everybody. Thank, you. thank you, Digits. Thank you, Tony. Buy the tortillas. Fuck yeah. The great Los Digits. Fuck yeah, man. Everything's... Uh, we, uh, we have a uh, liftoff. We have reached uh, our uh, altitude. You can now take off your seatbelts. Yeah. Chroma so far with the joke of the night, the long receipt joke coming out of uh, Michael Lair's. Whoa. Uh, Whoa, what was, what was that? that? That was my belt. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Why'd that come off? Oh, your seatbelt. I got it. <laughs> got it. Figured it out. Okay, pulled another name out of the bucket. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is this guy's first time on the show. Um, I. Uh, Found him. Uh, I discovered him in uh, David Luke at one of David Lucas's uh, videos. He is here tonight to make his Kill Tony debut. Sixty seconds and an interview from Jason Rodello. Everybody, here we go. Yeah, yeah. I just want. To fly, fly so high, fly, fly, fly away up in the sky. <laughs> yeah, oh boy, baby, put your arms around me, baby. <laughs> it really is a 20 second delay. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the Kill Tony debut of Jason Rodello. Hey, and I, oh, I'm still alive. <laughs> Riots, pandemics, Will Smith marriage problems. These are the issues that I will not be discussing, but instead I'll tell you about my amazing wife. I know it's hard to believe I'm... Married, but I look like someone who just makes shitty TikToks for a living or only masturbates to Ed Sheeran music playing, but I'm the marriage guy. I met my wife in Kazakhstan, and Kazakh people are beautiful, man. They look Asian, but speak Russian. So they are the holy grail of wet dreams for Red Band, am I right? Come on! Because Brian loves Asians. Juicy Asians, big tits bouncing, oriental, anal, fart fucking, five and a half inch, deep throat, Asian mom teaches daughter how to suck cack. All right, there's Jason Rodello, everybody. <laughs> Can I just say real quick that that sounds like a nightmare, an Asian that speaks Russian, something beautiful, and one of the wh most horrible uh, accents in the road. The Russians? You don't like a Russian accent? Oh, not on a woman. That's that just makes any. You like him on a man? Oh yeah. It's okay. A man. Damn man it. seems like a man seems like it fits. You know, like yeah. I seem like a dangerous man. You know, like a James Bond spy. <laughs> hey. But on a woman, just we finally found what kind of dude Red Band's into. Fuck yeah! Russian I will man. break you. 
<laughs> Red Band, what about... I would bend you over. <laughs> Red Band, Chroma Chris said, what about a, a Russian woman with an Asian accent? <laughs> now Ooh, that I could get hey. into. I love it. I love it. So Jason Rodello, first time on the show. Yes, you sir. are the first person in the history of the show that uh, was born without a forehead. Not a lot of people oh, know that. Oh, no. oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. There's one back there. I like your style, dude. I like My lady it. gave me that note, too. For a second, I thought you had a bicycle helmet on, but uh, <laughs> oh. now, now you moved it back. I see there's a little something there. Uh, so, well, I, well oh, yep. Oh, I like his hair. Hey. It looks just <laughs> like mine. Appreciate you, Chroma. You the man. Was that it? You just like... Oh, you have the same hair. Okay. For those of you listening, two that was a visual joke. I see it now. Mushroom hair. <laughs> It's more for the visual uh, watchers yep. instead of the listeners. Yeah, I had no idea. I literally turned around like, what the fuck? And then I saw it. Uh, Jason, <laughs> fuck yeah. How old are you, dude? 25. Heck yeah. 25. Youth. This five. is the future. So let's go back. Let's let's ask a question from earlier. Michael Lair brought up this generation. Are they eating ass? Are you eating ass? And have you had your ass eaten? Absolutely. On but uh, the ass eating part, or my ass being eaten, no, not yet. Right, I it's covered in trend. hair. I'm sure it's covered in hair. I it, see what your forehead uh, looks like. I can't imagine there, what your a little bit butt head looks like. For there you go. You know what that sound means? Yeah, it's no, covered uh, in hair. <laughs> <laughs> but you eat ass, huh? Occasionally, yeah. Yeah. When I'm uh, when I'm in the mood, it has to be a spicy night. Um, what do you, What do you mean by spicy night? You know. Honestly, I would consider it's not a, a spicy night, to be honest. I like mean, to celebrate, like a night to Yeah, celebrate. exactly. Special yeah. occasion, yeah. you know. Like in our days, eating ass was never even on the table. We, like, we didn't even know about no, that. No, not, not on the table. It wasn't even an option. Yeah. I mean, that was we can, considered a, 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 b- a bad decision. Yeah. 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 Nowadays, it's like the most exciting thing you can do. It's like proposing to the girl, basically. Yeah. It's like, I will eat your ass. And when they clench up on your tongue... Feels oh so good. God! <laughs> when Red Band does it, it, it literally makes me want to vomit. I'm gonna need that workshop, Red Band. <laughs> yeah, little, let me know. Let me know. I love it. Uh, can you show us what it looks like? Uh, your, what your face looks like when you're eating ass? Oh shit! Um. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. All right. That's pretty good. <laughs> you got that? I think Michael. <laughs> yeah. He knows. That's Michael knows. Great. I like it. Michael's I like it. So, Jason, uh, you're 25. You born and raised here in Los Angeles? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, currently residing in Studio City. Uh, but, yeah, I grew up in the Valley area, now in Studio yeah. City. Yep, Studio and, uh, City. And you'll lead that Studio Shitty. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, what do you do for work? For work, I'm a professional dancer slash choreographer. Get the Hard fuck to believe. out of here. I swear to, yeah, no. Are you serious? Yeah. Can we get a little sample? I mean, a little, sir. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> God damn, that is incredible. How, how long have you been doing that for? Uh, since the age of 13. Wow. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah, can we see some of your dance moves? I mean, Jeremiah, we can do this, bro. Let's see some of you. Let's see some of you. <laughs> oh, <dang. laughs> oh, this is a moment we locked eyes. <laughs> Caught me by surprise. Uh-huh. You love me. I long for your warm embrace, the caress of your face. We just work. I thank God He put you here. You're so beautiful, my dear. And I don't know what do you do to deserve you. <laughs> I need you, yeah, and the thing that you do, and I need you. I need you. Okay. Nothing without you. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Came all over my pants. That this is, is the best day of my life. That was that is appreciate exciting. That Gavin dancing to the song uh, "I Need You" from Jeremiah Watkins. You can the check Ooh. it out on his uh, YouTube page. It's a great, great song. Debuted uh, this week, number uh, number 
two million and forty five on the Billboard charts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I will say this. I will say this is that that song it might be one of the catchiest goddamn oh, songs. Oh, I of can't all stop time. singing in my head. And like, I always, for days. I always have to make the face I that you make when you say the I, I word. You. There's this face that you make where you go. <laughs> I like I when he goes like, it. look in my eyes, and he goes, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, he makes the same face that he did in his uh, Black Lives Matter video that he made. Oh, <laughs> it's it serious. He gets serious. Oh boy. Jeremiah can be one of the silliest people in the world, and he can get serious like a motherfucker. He, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that will never not break me right in my fucking back. Oh, my meter's up. Oh, no, no. no. Oh, shit. <laughs> he actually is uh, putting Wait, we're in, in the sky meter, right now. Where are you going? Oh, my God. He parachutes He's going to jump. He literally <laughs> does have to put money in his meter. Uh, fun fact for you listeners. We should talk about that because, like, before the show started, <laughs> he goes, it's a two-hour meter. And he goes... And we're all in the room scattered around at the part of the show where we're eating pizza all six feet away from each other. Thanks to our great friend, Charlie, from Vito's Pizza. He brings pizza every single week. Multiple pizzas of different kinds. We're all addicted to pizza. Everybody knows that. Anyway, and at one point, while, <laughs> while we're all just sort of, you know, getting ready but, you know, mentally preparing... Jeremiah goes, Tony. And I go, yes, Jeremiah. And he goes, my meter is up at about, uh, at about 8.50. What should I do? <laughs> and I'm literally like, what the fuck? Put money in your... Yeah, <laughs> like, have, a, have any one of the 70 people here put money or in your meter. Or at eight, like five minutes before we sh started the show, just put two quarters in. Yeah, or two <laughs> hours worth. Or really, just any amount of money, really. Just put do, just really do anything. I like you how that we're talking about this right now while he's walking through the audience yeah. and everybody's <laughs> looking at him like, yeah. what the fuck's wrong with yeah. this guy? He's probably <laughs> stopped and watching this right now being projected on the back wall of the comedy store. He's like, who are these guys? <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I love it. So, Jason, you're on this show for oh your yeah. first time. What's mm. something else that uh, we'd be interested to know about you? A fun fact about Jason Rodello that would uh, surprise us. Your dancing has me... Very surprised. On the how, spot, man. How did you learn how to do that? How does that come up in your life? Yeah, so initially I started dancing uh, from a Chris Brown music video. That n inspired me from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was like a dancing vampires called Wall to Wall. And yeah, yep. Wall to Wall. Um, and then, yeah, from there, just I saw the reaction I got from my friends, and it was just a feeling I couldn't escape. Similar to, you know, anyone doing comedy or just anything they right. enjoy doing. Yeah, but, uh, that's super cool. You blow people's minds like at like weddings and big events and shit. Absolutely. Oh, even bigger, man. I, yeah. I do teach classes across the world, the whole international thing. That's how I met my wife. I mean, I can get into it if you, I need to again. But, that yeah. is so cool. That's how the whole thing happened. Huh? And your wife took a dance class from you? Yeah. She owned a studio from the area that I met her in the different country. That's awesome. Red Band, I think you would like Kazakh people, man. I, I, that accent, man. That's the only thing that drives me crazy. Really? I, the Russian Dang, I was really banking off that joke, man. I thought I knew my stuff. Look at mm. any beautiful Russian model, the most beautiful woman in the world, and the second she opens her mouth, like, <laughs> it's horrible. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> we get it. There okay. you go. Right. The only, <laughs> Red Band only likes Russian dudes and Russian salad dressing. Okay. Those are the only two types of Russian. Actually, yeah, I, I don't mind good Russian. Russians, <laughs> what? That's basically Thousand Island, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what's weird? A French uh, salad dressing. What's no weird about French. it? French. It's like ketchup. No, almost. it's not. What it's, is it? It's not like ketchup. I don't like it. I don't know what flavor it actually is, though. What is what is the flavor of French? It's like sweet. No, it's not. It's it's not ketchup and mayo, Gino. This it's ki it's kind of control. like sweet and sour yeah. chicken, but yeah. something's it's, missing it's from it. It's closer to that. David, do you know the answer to this? Yay! I had a feeling he's, he's getting closer, <laughs> closer to sweet mustard than anything else. Jason, how do you know David Lucas? We, uh, I uh, saw oh you in uh, a couple of his videos. And this is how the universe... I know it wasn't from a dance class. Absolutely not, no. It was... Uh, I saw him... Well, I got into this show during the quarantine, surprisingly, and I just yeah. fell in love with it immediately, watched every episode like, wow. from the get-go. I can't believe we made a fan during the quarantine. During That's the quarantine, incredible. fresh off the queue. That's insane. 
And then uh, one can day you help he was us, just... Can you help us get back the 30,000 fans we lost during the quarantine? Oh, yeah, I can, man. <laughs> just yeah. kidding. Go ahead. So French dressing is a creamy ketchup-based dressing. Get the fuck out yeah. of here. <laughs> I had no Gino's idea. Gino's right. Uh, uh, it's, it's made ketchup of oil, vinegar, right. ketchup, and sugar. Ketchup is in that? Isn't that weird? Wow. That is weird. Fuck French dressing. I don't know. I mean, I only, I only really remember French dressing from, like, old-timey salad bars. Like, that yeah. would be the one that I picked long ago. I'm talking about Ponderosa. Oh, remember yeah. Remember Ponderosa? Ponderosa? Hell, yeah. You might know Ponderosa. They have those in no, Kansas? No, I think it's an Ohio thing. Wow. Hey, French dressing and fries might be good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, yeah, I met stu- uh, David in Studio City. Uh-huh. No, yeah, at, the, at my apartment. He was just randomly in my hallway. Oh. And I stopped him. But you know what? I knew how to not keep it, like, creepy. I was just like, David Lucas. Oh, it's Kill Tony. I'm a fan. Hey, uh, oh, I'll catch wow. you around. Oh, wow. That's so cool. So you actually recognized him from Kill Tony. Oh, well, there you go. Literally. Yeah. Fuck yeah. All right, Jason. It was nice to meet you. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank Fun you. Fun times. Ladies Appreciate and gentlemen, it, Jason Rodello, everybody. There he goes. Put your arms around me, baby. Put your arms around me, baby. I just want to fly. Yeah. All right. Two bucket pulls. That means we are ready for another regular, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, that magical, magical time of the show where... We get to see one of our favorite joke writers, one of the, uh, literally, probably the, I mean, definitely the greatest roasting regular in the history of the show. Um, One of my favorite people, uh, just a great comedian, a great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, David motherfucking Lucas, live in the flesh at the comedy store. Here he is, the real deal, David Lucas. Uh, the most scariest thing about the coronavirus was not getting pneumonia. The scariest thing for me was losing my sense of taste and smell. Like, you mean to tell me I can fry chicken and not smell a motherfucking thing? Let me put my goddamn mask back on. But I don't hate masks. Like, who knew that masks would make women look so goddamn good? Like, as soon as you cover up her mouth and her nose, that bitch is attractive as fuck. Like, I think we need to keep masks for another 10 years. I might fuck around and get married. This bitch can't say shit. She can't even breathe that good. I don't know. Coronavirus is scary as fuck. I ain't really scared. I want to get coronavirus just to lose weight. You know what I'm saying? Because I heard motherfuckers losing like 20, 30 pounds. I'm like, maybe I need to get coronavirus for like six weeks. That's my new diet plan and shit. Oh, no. oh, there we go. Fuck yeah, David Lucas. Absolutely. That shit went fast as hell with no audience. I timed it out. It was a minute and 15, and then I come here. That shit was 45 seconds. Happens quick sometimes. <laughs> you never know when it's going to go down. I yeah. like the set. Fun stuff. All yeah. about the corona. I believe it. I don't think you would, uh, I don't think you'd. Really, I don't think you're one of the guys that would lose your taste and smell. Let's check in with, uh, <laughs> let's check in with Sandra here because Sandy. Sandra, I- Sandy is fresh off of actually having the coronavirus. Yeah. So, and uh, from what I understand, you just lost your sense of smell. Just my sense of smell. That's so it. Sometimes I would remember smells, and I wasn't sure if I was smelling it or just remembering. Wow, that's weird. And, and you said you said you didn't lose taste, but when you can't smell anything, you can't taste anything. So I'm so confused about but that. But I, c- I could. Right. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know. <laughs> it makes no sense at all. Yeah. It makes no sense. <laughs> and, yeah, I still can't really smell. Really? Yeah. Wow. So you might be musty. <laughs> the, I can breathe. <laughs> You can breathe. I probably shouldn't do that. Do you know how you got it? Because <laughs> like, uh, uh, it seems like you didn't get it from any of us because we, n- all of us, well, don't yeah, have because corona. none of us had it. Right. All of us Nobody could be a Welcome to another episode <laughs> of Dr. Red Band, <laughs> I know, everybody. But, like, uh, when Red Band. When Red Band found out I got it, his first words were, You're a dirty girl. <laughs> 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 I think I said something else. I don't think I said girl. 
Yeah, dirty. <laughs> dirty whore. Yeah, dirty whore, I think is what I said. <laughs> wow. He so, knows that you, if you're not feeling good, <laughs> Dr. Redman. <laughs> well, uh, we know that you didn't get it from any of us. Um, uh, Dr. Redman. <laughs> <laughs> So, wow, this is interesting. On a very ass-eating, heavy episode of Kill Tony, it got started with Michael Lair. Uh, I think we're finding out that now with no sense of smell, perhaps Sandy, the flight attendant, is now into eating ass. Wow. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. (laughs) Everybody knows that. Turkeys and ass eaters. That's the noise that they make. Gobble. Have have you ate an ass before? (laughs) No, but uh, if I lose my taste, I might go in there. (laughs) Tony eat ass with a knife and a fork. Oh, come on, David. <laughs> with That's a napkin in true. his shirt and all that type of shit. Oh, That's my God. Table manners when he eating ass. <laughs> Dude. Can I, can I say... Goddamn uh, right. I'm a gentleman. Let's go, hear it, motherfucker. Go ahead, Gavin. Oh, no. When uh, I went to go refill my meter on the way out, uh, David uh, kind of shouted at me. He goes, hey, N-word, fill my meter too. <laughs> and I just want to let the audience know I became fully erect. <laughs> wow! Hell yeah! You really, you really had, had to put money in your meter. Too? Yeah, because me and that nigga parked at the same time, so I was like, "Hey, bro, you take your ass out there. I'm about to go next. Put my shit in there too." Damn! Yeah, look at that. What? What do you? Uh, do you ever put any of your the chocolate coins that you keep on you at all times in the meter? Hey man, get your ass up out of here, bro. You I know, I know. They melt. <laughs> they melt. You can't put those in the meter. You got to pay a dildo meter, nigga, for that shit to turn on, man. <laughs> a dildo meter? Yeah, you got to put. A <laughs> I mean, that's a real reach. <laughs> You got to put a cord in your bed, nigga. <laughs> okay. In the middle of it, just move and a dildo pop up. All right, I'll ask you. you <laughs> well, actually, yeah, that's that's actually true. That motherfucker Tony got to be chained up to go to sleep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I just see what the fuck what's <laughs> what's your uh, what's your sleeping situation? You sleep in a uh, food truck Apnea or something like that? Oh, get the fuck up out of here, bro! You sleep in a na- in a uh, sleeping bag naked, nigga. Like, <laughs> well, I, it sounds good, actually. Yeah, I mean that's actually really cozy. <laughs> that motherfucker Tony sleep next to a boa constrictor. <laughs> what? That's that's actually true. I have a boa constrictor. His name's Buddy. Yeah. Buddy the boa. And I it, I just at one point I just named him Bud. You look like you would name a snake Enter. Like okay. <laughs> All right. Not all of us. No though. audience here. God damn, this shit is fucked. I don't <laughs> even want to roast anymore. <laughs> Not all of us are lucky enough. I mean, you know. Do you have any pets? Hell no. Kids? I mean, a kid? Oh, yeah. I don't you know have, one of, those, you have one of those pet kids. Yeah, I got an right. STD, a kid. Damn. Damn. Well, I know pets, you, though. Did you just have a new kid recently? Is that a, I heard a rumor that you had a new baby. A rumor? Hmm. With a white chick? Rumor has it. With a white chick. Who told y'all about that? The chick is Someone said. I can't the, the even remember. In Canada? <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a uh, gossiper really? up in the sky. I'm going to plead the fifth. Oh. Wow. You just. Damn. You said, why no pet red man? Because I ain't got time to take care of shit. Another mouth to feed? Hell no. Right. Especially with your mouth to feed. That's a lot. <laughs> Dildo. Dildo. <laughs> um, all right. So what else is going on, David Lucas? Shit ain't shit changed since last week. Show. What were you doing in that hallway when you met Jason Rodello? I was at my brother's house. That motherfucker leave out a lot of shit. My brother live in the same building he live in. Oh, okay. So I went over to his house, you know, to check on him and shit. How many brothers do you have? Just one. He lives in Studio City? Mm-hmm. He lives right up street from me. He's an entrepreneur. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. So he sells CDs at Hollywood and Highland? <laughs> 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 shit, that motherfucker pay more rent than me, bro. He's selling something. Damn, mm. you don't know exactly what he does. He just tells t-shirts. You he got a t-shirt business. Oh, okay. Like vintage t-shirts. Oh, all right. Uh, Come with an eight ball. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he uh. So what he really does, like he goes to um. Like, you know, we got hella places in L.A. that sell, like, secondhand clothes. Mm-hmm. So he'll go get them, like, take them to the dry cleaners and sell them bitches online for, like, 150 Damn. Yeah. And wow. he buys them for, like, 20 bucks. Damn. Because everybody doesn't have access to that across the United States. But in L.A., we got a whole bunch of rich motherfuckers who, when shit go out of style, they turn it right in, and then you can sell it online. It's a profitable business. Hell, yeah. Your brother's flipping clothes like Digit's flips tortillas. <laughs> oh, Yeah. And what's that? What are you wearing? What is that tie dye? Uh? Oh, this is a uh, Pharrell's brand. Oh, yeah, this is Pharrell's brand. Yeah. Okay, I how much does something cream. like that run? Like eighty five, ninety. Even Jesus. for your size? Yeah. It's not more. For your size, it'd be free. You anorexic <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Fucking. 
<laughs> Fucking Wi-Fi cable built, motherfucker. That is that. That shirt is actually <laughs> the sleeping bag that I sleep naked in. Hell no, nah, you won't. I don't know what kind of sleeping bag you want. I love it. Yeah. Um, so nothing's changed since last week, not except for you may or may not have had a new child. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't had no new child last week. I can guarantee that. Shit. Oh, I'm, not, I mean, next. if I damn that, no, no. Wow, I feel like that's this. a true rumor. How he's acting, don't you think? It might be. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. This is this is uh, <laughs> it's, it's weird. This is the mo- one of the mo- more suspicious moments in the history of David <laughs> Lucas being on. This why y'all got to put all the pressure <laughs> on the black man? Y'all don't do none of the white guys or the white comedians. Like why y'all don't? Why do y'all don't assume William got a kid? Uh, because they come out like puddles. <laughs> they they can't form. And you solid. know Michael ain't got no fuck. Well, he got an old ass kid, but he ain't having no kids right now. <laughs> he's not. He's not doing new kids at all. Hell yeah. He's got no. My, he got to bump coochies with a bitch to get her pregnant. Michael does. Yeah. Why would he have to? He doesn't have a vagina. Because he got ALS, so he got a. I mean, if his body's paralyzed, I imagine. Oh, it works down there. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah. God damn! God damn! <laughs> he gets to board the flight first, obviously. I see first it. class, first ass. Wow! <laughs> Look at that. That's hella funny, nigga. First I class. Love it. All right, David. I've never been on the airplane with a, with a motherfucker in a wheelchair. That's crazy, though. And I fly a lot. I've been on the airplane with a midget, but never. You had sex with a midget? No, nigga. You oh. ain't listening. Yeah, I, know. I said I've never been on an airplane with a person in a wheelchair, but I've been on plane on a plane with a midget. I've been on a plane with a midget before as well. Were you with me on that? Was that that one? I know I must have told you about it, but. You tell me anecdotes, and I just listen and, you know. Anyway, there's a uh, there is a comedian who is a... Uh, who is a midget? And one oh, time, yeah. one time we were on uh, the same uh, flight, and he was actually uh, one row ahead of me. <laughs> which you know, street cred is you always want to be in front of people. Right. And I remember he goes, "Hey, Tony," and he was in the row in front of me, uh, and across the aisle. And I remember being like, "Fuck, I can't believe he has a better seat than me." Right. And I then, remember. and then, right as I was. Really, like a minute after I was jealous of his better seat, he uh, he stood up on the chair and adjusted the uh, <laughs> adjusted the air vent like he was changing a light bulb. And, I'm, <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? I'm not jealous anymore. <laughs> Hell no, bro. Mitch is actually giving me anxiety. Dog. I will never forget that moment. And you have not. You have not held in a laugh in your life until you see a midget turning <laughs> off the air vent, standing up on a chair. They would have put me on the plane. I'd have been laughing so hard. Oh, I know. <laughs> I almost had to throw up in one of those barf bags. It was incredible. Do you ever notice that midget women always have fat asses, bro? Dude, they are they are natural pogs. Would you hit one? No. No. Yeah. I mean, it'd be it, the best flashlight ever. If I if I was like in red, the baby. desert, <laughs> like by myself, Don't do red, baby. if I was in the desert by myself, like three hours into a mushroom trip, and like a <laughs> hot midget appeared out of nowhere, I don't know, I might do something. You don't think that would be hot? Just like, well, I guess not. What red. would you do? What would you? What would? What would be your <laughs> red man would feed that bitch first. I mean, right when I thought about it, I, I, I it just heard like <laughs> like that. Oh wait, what? You do you think when I wake up in the morning? <laughs> you think midgets are like kids? Well, I mean that's what I was thinking. Like I was imagining her like riding me, but then it'd be like oh, it'd be like a little kid. I don't know. It'd Oh my god! Red band just disgusting. I, don't, I, I think that, that as much as it seems hot, it also seems like it wouldn't be hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm <laughs> Somehow Red Band made uh, having Red sex with a midget even more gross than it already was. Red Band on his Chris D'Elia shit with that pink microphone trying to attract kids. Oh and shit. come on! My come pink on. and purple yeah. microphone. Yeah. I thought you some Fisher Price ass shit. You right got there, a bro. purple and pink shirt on. I don't know what the fuck you're talking yeah. about, bro. You got two dolph- dolphins kissing on a hat, nigga. Yeah. Yeah, I used to be able to wear this hat until uh, somebody released a comedy special. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> John Crickets. I love what Tony's like, okay, we got to wrap this shit I up. I love it. Absolutely. We do. You are turning more and more into a big bundle of cotton candy every second yeah. that you stand there. Getting stronger too, bro. I love it. You've been working out? Yep. What have you been doing? Lifting every- food up to your mouth? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, David. So much yeah. fun. Good to have you All on right, again, bro, David Lucas, yeah. everybody. On to the next one we go. Ooh. 
why not? Because I got it. Because I got it. Because I got it. Ba da ba ba da da ba. All right, your next comedian. Uh, is, this is also his first time on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, this young man I met a few days ago here at the comedy store. Um, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for him. It's Mausha, everyone. Mausha. Here we go. Mausha, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, you. <laughs> Mousha Step back from that ledge, my friend. 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 Step back, my friend. All right, here he is, Mousha. It's Moha. Moha. So the other day I was walking around in my neighborhood in Hollywood, and I was walking by this alley, and I heard some noises, and I went in there just to check it out, and I see this buff-ass prison rat fucking a raccoon. So I'm like, what the? So I get closer, right? And he's just nailing this raccoon pussy to the wall. Smashing it. I get even closer and I noticed the raccoon is dead. He's fucking a dead raccoon. So I get even closer and get a seat right next next to it. He don't give two fucks. This rat is just <laughs> smashing the shit out of this raccoon. Eventually he finishes, he pulls his dick out, walks away, and he looks at me like he's about to smack me. He just got out of prison. Buff ass rat. And I, I thought about it. I was like, wow, if you, if you balls deep in some good pussy, don't worry about who's watching. And the second th- thing I thought about was, I might fuck some raccoon pussy after that. Thanks, guys. What the fuck? Moha. All right, Moha. Uh, so you saw some guy doing what? I saw a buff ass rat fucking a raccoon. You saw a buff ass rat rat having sex with a raccoon dead raccoon a dead raccoon is this a true story no (laughs) why how did you make this wild tail up this is like a horrible pitch for a pixar movie (laughs) it's it's an episode of the boondocks that didn't make it (laughs) Uh, this is the first one of my first jokes i ever wrote and i didn't even know how I came up with it, because it was like in March when I started writing. And in his defense, he usually has a stool to hump. <laughs> he usually what? <laughs> Just repeat that again for he us. He usually has a stool to hump when he's, sh- he's doing the joke about the rat fucking the dead raccoon. Is that true? Do you he normally do an act stool. out if you're on the stage? Uh, I mean, I'm new. This is actually the second time I've ever been doing open mic. Oh, okay. Well, welcome. Second time ever performing. Where was the first open mic? We drove down to San Diego, and we did, I did my first open mic in San Diego a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. And uh, where, how many people were in the room in San Diego? By the time I performed, I was last. It was six people out of 30 mm-hmm. left. Wow. That's interesting. So uh, tell us more about you, Moha. Where are you from? So I'm African. Really? Yeah, but... Thank you, thank you. What kind of African are you? (laughs) (laughs) There you go. I'm East African, Somalian. Oh, Somalian. But I was raised most of my life in Sweden, Stockholm. I'll call you captain anytime you want. Yeah, you you know who's the captain. He's the captain now. (laughs) All right. So you're from Somalia. All right. What uh, what was your child? How long have you been in America? I've, I've been here about 12 years now. 12 years, okay. You came with uh, your whole family or just you? Yeah, just me. Uh, I came to, uh, I liked America better, so I moved to, this is my aunt in Seattle. Uh-huh. Wait, wh- what about Seattle? I moved to Seattle. When okay, I was why Seattle? What made you pick there? My family was there. Your family was in Seattle? Yes, my aunts. Oh, your aunts, okay. And uh, what do your parents do for a living? My mom doesn't work. She lives in London, and my dad lives in Stockholm. He's a bus driver. Stockholm, uh, Sweden? 
Yes. Oh, okay. He no, drives the syndrome. Bus. <laughs> Got him. That's, that's not a place. <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome's not a place. It's a thing, bro. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> now hump the stool. <laughs> Are you a flight attendant or a fight attendant, you caddy bitch? What are you doing? <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Daryl, <Darryl>, stop. <laughs> okay, so uh, why does your mom live in London if your dad lives in Stockholm? They separated. She got a husband. Oh. There. Oh, wow. So how did they end up separating? Did they separate and then she had a husband or did she cheat on your bus driving father? <laughs> no, they separated first. Okay. Uh, How old were you? This is my stop. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when that happened? I was about maybe ten. Maybe ten years old. And uh, okay. How did that affect? How did that make you feel when your parents said they were separating? Uh, it didn't feel that weird. It oh. was normal. Okay. All right. Okay. That's fun. So you, you lived with your aunts in Seattle. Yes. Your aunt. Your aunt Tifa and your aunt E bodies. <laughs> That's correct. These are these are quarantine jokes, everybody. Aunt Tifa <laughs> and Aunt E bodies. We wouldn't even tell those jokes on Southwest Airlines. <laughs> 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 oh, Buckle my. up. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Moha, uh, what? It, how's your love life been since uh, you've been here as, a, as an American? It's been great, except yeah. I'm single right now. You're single right now, but you still, uh, you still getting laid, hooking up with uh, white women. Uh, I hook up with any woman that looks good, especially if she got a fat ass. Wow, that's what you're into. Yeah, oh I'm my. black after all. You are black, right? A lot of white people are into fat asses nowadays too, though. That is, uh, it's like rap music. It used to be just black people were into it. Now everybody's into it. Yeah, white girls been thick as fuck lately. Yes, white girls figured it out. Yep. Back in the day, the only way for a white girl to uh, have a fat ass was by eating a lot. But now they've realized there's one exercise called squatting that, uh, that in which you can actually grow an ass. Or you, they can get it done. Yeah, implants. So cheap. Mexico. It's like if two cheeks wanna. for like $500 or something. Dr. Redman. <laughs> hey. <laughs> 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 it's like a two for 500 bucks. Uh, wow. Is that true, Red Band? Have you looked into a... Yeah. Did you get some? Is no. that where you got no, yours from? But I had this idea to make a pillow out of implants, like boob, like a boob pillow. And I was going to buy the implants, and I found that you could buy them from Mexico pretty cheap. Yeah, um, but how many McDoubles is that? <laughs> the one in Mexico, it that falls is down. literally like fucking 1,000 McDoubles. Yeah, it's 1,000. My goodness. What do you like to, uh, what's some of your favorite American cuisine? You're from Somalia. They are uh, usually very hungry over there. So <laughs> you, uh, you must have you know, quite the appetite. What do you like here in America? What do you like to eat other than uh, thick white girls' asses? Oh, uh, Chicken. Fried chicken. Oh, wow. I like waffles. Shocking. Steak. Chicken, waffles, steak. Everything except for pork. Oh. No, oink, oink for me. No pork, why huh? Don't you why like pork? Why, why no pork? I'm Muslim. Oh, you are. Okay. Heck yeah. God, so, <laughs> all right. My soundboard has like every single one of them. It's about him. Do you have a Muslim uh, sound effect? Yeah. yeah, let's hear it. Where is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That's enough. That's very long. <laughs> Please blur my face on this part of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> so do you, uh, is there, uh, you have like a Muslim church that you go to? What are those called again? Mosques. Yes. What, what, you I, don't, I don't have one, but I should find one. Okay. All right. You, uh, you ever take any uh, flight classes or anything like that? No. Okay. All right. If you, uh, if you, had, to, uh, if you had to kill one race of people, what would your race be? Which ones would you pick? America is an option. Just the <laughs> shitty races down on Trump motherfuckers. Wow, look at that. That's very interesting. You would just pick one human and you chose the president of the United States of America. <laughs> you know, all the racist people. All the racist people. Okay. That's cool. Have you met have you met a racist since being here in America? I think I met a lot of them. They just don't have the balls to say something to my face. They don't have the balls to say something to your face? Yeah, which is weird, right? Yeah, yeah. that is Here's weird. Here's your moment, Tony. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 
I said, here's your moment. He said, he's never <laughs> met a racist face to face. I said, here's your yeah, moment, Tony. No, he knows what's going on. This guy's built like a fucking microphone over here. He's built like <laughs> Bob Barker's microphone, just thin and very thin and very black. Microphone head? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So no one's ever been racist to you in America, but the people that you would pick first to kill are the racists. You've never had anyone be racist to you face to face. Twelve years here in America. That's pretty good odds. Yeah, I mean, living in a big city might help. Seattle's diverse. LA, mm-hmm. diverse. Living in a, yeah, living in a big city helps, but that also means that you're around more people that could be racist. It almost seems like a lot of the racist people live away from the big city where they wouldn't have to be around other right. races. I guess I'm lucky. Huh. Yeah, maybe you're lucky, or maybe, uh, maybe just maybe, maybe racism is uh, an overexposed storyline in the modern media. Who knows? Thank you, Tony. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. <laughs> President. It is uh, always a pleasure. Anyway, Moshe, you have any special skills or talents? We had a guy earlier do a magic <laughs> trick. We had a guy earlier do some dance moves. Is there anything you have, any talents you have that would surprise us? Uh, I'm a basketball player. I play basketball. Can we well. get this guy a basketball? Does anybody have a basketball in their car? It's literally one of the top most dangerous sports right now. Oh. Uh, it's Moha, Tony. Moha. Moha. Yeah. Okay. Moha. Okay. Uh, so basketball, what else? Anything else? Uh, what else can you do? You know, any... Uh, you know uh, any poetry or anything like that? No. Uh, I was an athlete. I'm a big sports fan. Okay. Uh, my, one of my favorite movies is one of your favorite movies, Goodfellas. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Tony likes big fellas. <laughs> yeah, I like good fellas. I like bad fellas. As long as they have a penis and a ball sack, as I'm into them because I'm a gay man. Yeah, as long as the fellas are I am a gay man. <laughs> that was all right. Nothing Sorry. to do with that. I will run with this storyline forever. I am a gay dude. Good fellas and all types of fellas. <laughs> um, okay, what's your favorite scene from Goodfellas? Let's reenact it together because I know every line of that movie, so we can do it. Am I funny to you? That's the scene, the worst <laughs> fucking scene in the whole movie. <laughs> all right. That, that's the one I, I like that scene. No one, no one actually likes that scene. Oh, that's the think? scene that people that haven't actually seen the movie. My favorite scene <laughs> when he's freaking out, driving at the end with the helicopters, and he's like looking up while he's driving. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Moha, fun times. Nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Congratulations. Thank you, dude. brother. His Appreciate second it. time ever performing stand up comedies Thank here you, on brother. Kill Tony. That's Moha. La da da. Ba, da, 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 da. What? Where did you find that guy? I met him here. Met him uh, oh, yeah. out back at the Comedy Store. He said he wants to be able to do Kill Tony when he can. And uh, I had to pre select a few healthy people that would uh, test properly through the rigorous testing system they have set up here where they take your temperature one time and cross their fingers afterwards. Mm-hmm. Or crush their fingers, as Michael Lair would say. Um, you're, uh, you're, I, I, I could pull it out of the bucket just to make it fancy, but I know who's left because he's the only other submission. This was, uh, this was um, this is a very funny man recommended by Michael Lair himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Mack, everybody. Here we go. Here he is, Elliot Mack. So I have gay dads. Yeah, which you applaud in 2020. Thank you. Fuck, the rest of you make it sound like they just kidnapped me from a nuclear family when I was eight and showed me Ellen 10 hours a day till I turned out like this. Which is exactly what happened, but it doesn't mean I don't deserve applause for it. No, it was cool growing up with gay dads. Like, every morning, they just put me on the gay agenda. It was just brunch, mimosas, brunch again, tap dancing lessons, eat a salad, go to bed, listen to Wicked. That shit was bomb. The best part was definitely whenever it was family game night and I got to choose like the vote on what to do. And it was my two straight brothers, my two gay dads, and me. So I would just be like, all right, should we get Cubs tickets or should we see Wicked for the fifth time? Cubs tickets, Cubs tickets, Wicked, Wicked, Wicked. Oh my God. I know about popular. 
But then I'd get hit with a belt for singing off key, so it evened out to a regular childhood. Hell yeah. I love it. So good to finally have someone a little bit less gay than me on this show. Um, <laughs> uh, very exciting stuff. Nice to meet you, Elliot. This is your first time on the show, correct? First time. Glad How to be here. How long have you been doing comedy for? I've been doing comedy 11 years now. Awesome. All of it here in Los Angeles? No, I grew up in Chicago, actually, and I started taking comedy classes at Second City when I was 12 after seeing Michael perform with A.D. Bryant. He did this one hilarious blackout. They were wearing sombreros. It was incredible, and I was like, that. That's what I want to do. Wow, that is so cool. So you actually saw Michael Lair when you were 12 years old. How old are you now? I'm 23. 23. That is fucking awesome. You saw Michael Lair when you were 12, and you said, I want to do comedy, and now you've been doing it. He was fucking hilarious, yes. Oh, it's been an amazing is. ride. <laughs> oh, he's, he's something else. He's unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I think we finally found out who's putting the gold bond powder on Michael Lair's balls right oh. here. <laughs> it's out. <laughs> no doubt, indeed. I love it. That is so awesome. So, how long have you lived in Los Angeles for? Uh, I was here for about six months, and then I went home to be with family for quarantine. Mm -hmm. And then I did, you know, like the Mint open mic. Do you remember that? No. It was happening for a bit. It was this really cool open mic where you would open the door and like weed smoke would billow into your face. And I did an online like Zoom mic and I got to see like all the other LA comics and I'd been thinking about not coming back to LA and I was like, I need to be with this. Like, this is it. So I came back. I've been moving for the last month. Um, it shouldn't have taken me so long to move, but I also had to decorate. So like that. Oh, that's hilarious. Dragged it out. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Um, so uh, you're a gay man. You live in West Hollywood. Uh, I did, but I hated all of the other people there. Yeah, it is a little bit wild, right? I'm going to yeah. share something with you guys. I saw two gay guys holding hands today. Ew! Yeah. And I literally thought to myself, that is like the gayest thing that two gay guys could do. Oh, right. Like nowadays, it, like 10, 20 years ago, you'd be like, if you saw two guys making out, you'd be like, whoa, that's gay, right? And then like, you know. Since then, there's like butt fucking, I think is the most gay thing two guys can do. But mm -hmm. then it hit me today, in 90 degree heat, in the middle of the day in Los Angeles, you don't see any men and women holding hands. Like to hold hands, you have to literally be like, I don't mind uh, making a puddle of sweat with our hands. We had to fight for that. We're going to do it, goddammit. It is. It's a hot day. That is incredible. And... uh would you agree that that's, a, that's an extremely gay thing? Oh, 100%. I was with this guy the other day, actually, and there's like, I guess there's like a connection between us or something because we can't hold hands or he'll get a boner. He'll get a boner? Well, like, kind, well it's kind of like if he gets a boner, it's like a yawn. You know how that like spreads around? Right. Totally. Exactly. Right. Hey, Gavin. So if you hold hands, he gets a boner, and then if he gets a boner, you get a boner. Exactly. And, and then, then if some other gay guy sees you two guys with boners. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> He can tell. It's up to like a mile away. The gaydar has a very long radius. Absolutely. You're telling me. I'm like a Doppler gaydar over here. I, yeah. I see it all. I have but a, I have a tri-county gaydar. Boners spread like coronavirus in the gay community. That's right. We call it the, <laughs> we call it the baronavirus. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the old uh, fucking. That would be so weird if uh, straight friends could hold hands. Like if we like went to go get some food together, we were all holding hands. What says he can't? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, we're a fan. Can you just imagine holding Jeremiah's hand. <laughs> I, I, I I don't like holding anybody's hand. I just I've never been a let's hand try, holder. Let's just try it out, see what it feels like. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> not. Yeah, let's start now of yeah, all times. <laughs> absolutely not, Red Band. I didn't like touching you pre-coronavirus. <laughs> Not to mention right oh, now. Come look on. at that fucking. Come on. Look at this Red softest hand in the oh, business. God. Look at that big, strong hand. Look yeah. at that just shaking from <laughs> fucking caffeine and nicotine, just <laughs> vibrating <laughs> with high, <laughs> blood, <laughs> high <laughs> blood pressure <laughs> vibrations. Tell him to wipe off Brian the ketchup. Brian thought you said holding hams. <laughs> <laughs> Red Band loves holding hands. <laughs> wow. Oh, Jesus. Look at that. Okay. So, Elliot, how long have you been with this uh, boyfriend of yours? Um, it's kind of been like one of those things where just like whenever we're in the same city, it goes down. Oh, wow. Um, so like three times over the last three years, but now he's in Orange County and I'm in LA. So it's like a little bit easier. Uh -huh. Yeah. I would love to tell you that like, he's my Ellen or something and we're gonna get like have two kids and two dogs, but 
<laughs> probably not. Yeah. Okay. What? Uh, how'd you meet him? Um, originally Tinder, and then he and this other guy, like, we went to a bow, and they, like, fought over me. And I was like, no, stop. I hate wow. this. <laughs> and they're, they're, are they, like, tops or bottoms? How does that work? Is that a thing? Is that a weird question? I'm not saying another word without my lawyer present. <laughs> Uh-oh. I love that. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, uh, is that how Tinder works? Like, do they have it separated, like, in, in tops and bottoms or anything like that? You know. Oh, that's right. No, I just <laughs> yeah, have to pretend. Yeah, that guy is playing dumb. <laughs> I'm, so I'm deep in the closet, so I have to pretend like I don't know these things. I messaged you, and you never replied. What happened? <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I haven't checked my, uh, what do they, do they call it an inbox or a butthole? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Okay. All right. Man, this is my episode tonight. I'm just what they would call on fire. Somebody get the gringo bandito hot sauce because it's a spicy one tonight. Oh, kill Tony. Come on now. All right. Elliot, any uh, special skills or talents or anything like that other than uh, uh, being a comedy veteran? Started at, what, 13 years old? That is fucking awesome, man. That is so cool. That's Chappelle, Eddie Murphy. All those guys. Thank you, yeah. Uh, I was going to learn to play the ukulele for this, but I was like, eh. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> How about anything else? We had a guy earlier that could dance. We had a guy earlier do a, an unbelievable magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed a piece of uh, plastic out of his hand. <laughs> it's really impressive. I can do pottery, but like. <laughs> you know what? Somebody bring. Can we get a pottery wheel in here? A couple kilns. Yeah. Kilns. <laughs> Kiln Tony. Welcome to another episode of <laughs> Kiln. Oh, that got that got that got a laugh. There you go. Looks like uh It was punny. That's what I'll think that's the moment I'll think of before I fall asleep tonight was Kiln Tony. The big <laughs> laugh that I got. <laughs> right. Just as I'm crying and sweating myself to sleep. I love it. Um Elliot, uh, let me ask you this before I let you go. Have you ever been with a woman or anything like that? Like Only while I was sucking her boyfriend's dick. Is that wow. true? 100%. So yeah. you guys had like a threesome? Yeah, it was actually, it was when I was in high school and he was our quarterback and we had all been like drunk bowling that night and people were like going off and then they were like, oh, Elliot, like you have a hot tub, right? And I was like, yeah. And we went back to my hot tub and like he looked at his girlfriend and his girlfriend looked at me and then they both started changing like glances and I was like, no, Damn. no. And then she was like, "So Elliot, what happens in the turnt tub stays in the turnt tub, wow. right?" Wow. And then you bent over, and he put his hands under your butt and went hut hut. So close, actually. <laughs> he put his his hands in like the two finger of my elastic. Gay quarterback uh, jokes. Exactly. And he pulled me into his lap and kissed me. And then immediately, like clockwork, I just like grabbed her face and was like, "Out of my way! This is my moment." Oh shit! Yeah, and sucked his dick. <laughs> Everything that you do, the fire in your eyes. And I have a big secret. Oh, yeah? It was Gavin. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Because I have a face. Will you marry me? Bring around your finger. Do you have to let it linger? I want to marry you. <laughs> we just work. Put my finger in your butt. You are my lovely cut. <laughs> Elliot, uh, well, awesome, man. I'm so glad uh, that you came down. Come back anytime you want. And by come back, I mean... After you go to Orange County and visit your boyfriend. You know what I mean? Come Wonderful. back. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Elliot really Mack, everybody. There amazing. he goes. Elliot Mack, ladies and gentlemen. William. William, get, a William, get away, man. <laughs> All right. There's only one person left to perform tonight. Uh, we're so excited about it. Um, his stock is uh, crashing through the uh, floor. I mean, this guy was once beloved on this show. 
he <laughs> at one point was the only regular on the show. And then once he started to fade out a bit, I brought in David Lucas so that he would get his shit together um, and write harder and work harder. And then uh, a few months after that, he started to crash again. We brought in Michael Lair, who absolutely started stealing episode after episode after episode. He upped his game yet again. And now he's crashing yet again, disappointing people from the management to the band to the host of the show to the other regulars. And now he's here to perform for you right now. Closing out tonight's show, William the Big Red Machine Montgomery. He's... Fighting off his back here tonight. A lot of people disappointed in him. How do here I fucking stand and talk into this? <laughs> I'm kidding. That was my joke I've been working on. No, but seriously, Elliot and I had sex last week. Uh, we're expecting. No, I'm kidding. Y'all are in for a treat. This probably, Jeremiah, might be my best set. Um, if we're in Syria... We ain't talking about Jesus. We talking about Brandon. Uh, Y'all ever watch The Sixth Sense? Because that's been happening to me this past week. Every time I turn on The Sixth Sense, I'm like, hold up. Is that Brandon? Uh, If you're in the parking lot of the comedy store, please leave any excess syringes in the tip jar. Uh, Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish is now single. That's way better news than if I told you Darius Rucker released a new single. Uh, If they defunded the Ghostbusters, who are you going to call? That was probably my best. Can I say the the next one? Yeah, you want one to work? Maybe that one will work. Go ahead. One to work on... um, One of my favorite bands is Traffic. Uh, One of my least favorite bands is Child Traffic. Oh, boy. All right, William Montgomery. That was his set this week. He had a lot riding on this, people. A lot riding on this. You could say that, Tony. I have this mask on now because I got something called diabetes. Oh, boy. Coming off a wild week this week. He Coming off a $3,000 loss <laughs> from one of those games you put the the little marble on. Uh, roulette. Roulette. Lost 3000 fucking dollars. Y'all get a good look at these eyes right now. I'm heading back to Memphis. Yep. I lost all my fucking money. I'm gone. And you're also in the process of losing your job. Is that correct? It is correct. I'm worried about this thing. They call COVID. Hold on. What's that guy's name, Brandon? Jeremiah, you told me to say that joke. I don't think he did. There's something weird going on with your mask. It's very anteatery. There's a, there's a, <laughs> anteatery? Yeah, it's anteatery. That's what I did in Vegas. You anteateried? Ate a bunch of Butterfingers. Yeah. In this fucking mask. Yeah. around all these people. And Michael, I love you. I don't want to call you out, but I was eating Butterfingers around a bunch of crippled folks. Uh-huh. William and lost it gave me the creeps. William lost $3,000 at the buffet in Vegas. <laughs> Can you say that a little bit slower, bitch? Wow. William, not very nice. Uh, where'd you get that mask from? Did you get that in Las Vegas? From Ron John Surf Shop. In huh? Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, you went to Jacksonville this Ron week. Ron John. I seriously thought you were going to say Ron John Silvers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen to all the laughs in the room that didn't happen during your set. Jeremiah, I My swear to Gavin. God, man, Gavin. I listened to your new song. It made me cry to some extent. Now you're making fun of me saying Ron John Surf Shop. What am I going to do? I've lost my job. I'm heading back to Memphis. We just work. That's one of my favorite lyrics in the whole thing. Can I read y'all one of my favorite quotes? Okay, go ahead. Um, Is this the the comedy part? And they were telling me, now it doesn't matter now. 
It really doesn't matter what happens now. I left Atlanta this morning. Okay, well. Let me start from towards the bottom. No, it's okay. (laughs) So uh, you went to Vegas. You lost a bunch of money. How's your your girlfriend? She is not with us no more. She passed away. She is passed to the other side. That guy (laughs) holding the fucking camera was there touching my testicles. It was so sweet of you. He saw what happened. Literally, I drowned her. You drowned your girlfriend. Literally, I drowned her. In the Bellagio Fountain in Las Vegas? In the Bellagio Fountain. What? what? I killed her. She's 42. Why'd you kill your 42-year-old girlfriend? Because I'm 32. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) yeah. Showed her who's boss. Just kidding. I'm 33. She's 42. I killed her fucking ass. She had it coming to her. Did you at least rough her up a little bit or just straight, just a straight dip? Did I at least eat a Butterfinger? Yeah, I did. Wow. You ate a Butterfinger while doing it or beforehand? I ate a Butterfinger just just pregame, eating a Butterfinger, looking in her eyes. I have goggles on. She has goggles on. She's in the bathtub. She's drowning. I don't care no more. So you drowned her a little bit in the bathtub, and then you took her to hey, the... Hey, Red Band, that was perfect, you motherfucker. <laughs> also, that did, toot noise. Did you, did you just say the word drowning? <laughs> did I say the word drowning? Good one. Did you? What's wrong with that? How do you say that? Drowning. Drowned. No D at the end of that. If Red Band's correcting your English grammar, you're in big trouble, dude. Professor I'm Red in Band. deep shit. Professor what? Everyone in the railroad knows how to say drowning. (laughs) Everyone in the railroad. I was in the motherfucking railroad 15 fucking years. I swear to God. I've worn a mask before. Good one. Thank you, Red Band. I've worn this shit before. I was a conductor. What did you, you were, that's what you did on the railroad? I was putting pennies on the track. Seeing what happened when the locomotive hit them. That's what I was doing. Jeremiah, get my back on that. I uh, got your back, and my name's Gavin. <laughs> I liked William better when he called in on the video. <laughs> Thanks so much, bitch. You got me sick. Why do you think I have to wear this now? Where's the marshal on this plane? <laughs> William, you Where are my lungs now, bitch? William, you've been saying that you've had coronavirus now for four months. Is, have you had any yeah. symptoms at all? Yeah, I started losing in Chinese checkers. You're going to have to check that attitude of the gate, okay? I've started losing in fucking Chinese checkers, Tony, and I don't know what the fuck to do. Well, I've you? been listening to Skinner. I've been playing Chinese checkers. What did you bet on in roulette? Lindard black Skinner. or <laughs> black or red on roulette? Black twenty-two inch Tahoe lifted. All right. That's what I bet on. That's what I was driving. Okay. Driving in Memphis, Tennessee. It was. A little fun fact, a little inside information. Uh, William actually made... uh, William actually caused quite the scene last week around the comedy store. He was pacing around. He was talking very close to people. And you told me that the pussies running this place really called me (laughs) out. No, no, that's not... That wouldn't be the way... Red man, is that what you're going to do, motherfucker? You told me to walk around, you piece of shit. I never told you to walk around. You told me to walk around. And now, Tony, you're calling me out for walking around. Red Band, you told me that, dude. I get it. You're from Ohio. You eat Wendy's. You're 28 years old. I I trusted you. I think he's losing it. Excuse me, your emotional (laughs) carry-on is a little bit too large for this flight. Jeremiah, just Gavin. right here, what I picture is when I was in Vegas, just me and you being in sort of the top part of that hotel, just me and you being the guy killing everyone, and just me putting on your song, and you being like, William, hey, stop. We just without you. 
and everything <laughs> that you do. <laughs> and just reckless abandon shooting that AK-47 and you stopping shooting and me pointing a gun to your fucking head. All right. That's tonight's episode. There goes William Montgomery, everybody. There he goes. Go ahead, William. All the way to the back, William. Straight back. Straight back. Let's check out the drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt. Uh, While you all sat around doing nothing... He drew this. Look wow. at that. You can get a little bit closer there. Yeah. That's great. That's all of us on an airplane. Yeah, a little red In bear. honor of the flight attendants and, of course, your pilot, Captain Hinchcliffe, with my first officer, Brian Redban. Okay. We're going to be taking off for another, uh, we'll see you next week. Shout out to those of you in the parking lot that were awesome enough to join us here at the Comedy Store making history in this hundred year old building uh you know we're making it happen we're fitting things into uh fitting things into the uh proper slots here hoping things get better sometime soon we have william montgomery in charge of making the new vaccine for covid19 so i'm expecting a cure now any second here go that way that way all the way back all the way there there you go. And then stand there once you get there. All the way. Um, a lot of fun stuff happening. We'll be back uh, next Monday with a, yet another show, which is exciting stuff. Shout out to Vito's Pizza, RyanJBelt.com, CavemanCoffeeCo.com, and Lucy.co. Get off your uh, get off your cigarettes and your vape pens. Go to Lucy.co. Use the code KILLTONY, and they will literally uh, let you try their product for the minimum amount of money by law. Yeah, and if you've tried the nicotine gum before, you know it's expensive usually and it's not that good. This is, tastes really good, so try it out. Gum is a dollar. Lozenges at $2. You can uh, get your lungs stronger than ever during the coronavirus by not catching coronavirus and trying that out. Uh, here's the part where we uh, check in with Jeremiah Watkins, who has a new episode of Jeremiah Wonders out. Uh, with uh, Dr. Phil and Shanks, actually. That's very exciting. Very exciting. You Kill Tony fans are going to love that. Adam Ray plays Dr. Phil. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Jeremiah plays Shanks. He's got his Venmo piece of paper there. At Jeremiah-Watkins to cover all parking fees tonight. <laughs> For those of you that... Uh, <laughs> and then I'll be in Arizona at the end of the month, uh, July 30th and 31st. Denver is canceled, uh, but Arizona is still going strong. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and, You're definitely uh, not going to be in Denver's in way Arizona. better shape than yeah. Arizona. <laughs> It's weird that you want to do that gig, but and yeah. then uh, I have a Louis J. Gomez uh, shirt up on. Uh, Is on that a Instagram. real shirt? That's a real shirt. That's real. There you go. That's <laughs> such a weird shirt. Yeah, that's good though. Jeremiah has been taking some creative chances lately. He's got uh, new songs out. He's going to be dropping more of those, according to what uh, what I've read in uh, Billboard magazine. There's a whole bunch more coming. So. We're excited to see some of those romantic uh, songs. I will have a number one song someday. <laughs> you know what? I agree. You put it. You put those energies out there, cool. and uh, people that believe in uh, hope will clap at that. How about uh, hand for Jetski Johnson, everybody? She was here tonight. That was her. She's back from the coronavirus. She's Jetski Johnson. What else, Jetski? Uh, everybody who messaged me when I was gone and checked in, every, you know, everybody here and at home listening, thank you so much. That was so nice. And if you are alone, hang in there. It sucks, but it, it, yeah. She saw <laughs> what you, you wrote her. She heard your thoughts. She it did not a smell a single thing. <laughs> I didn't smell any of it. <laughs> um, Chroma Chris was here tonight, everybody. Unbelievably funny. Incredibly great on the bass. So glad to have you back filling in uh, the sounds of the band. You make it so much more powerful. What am I missing, Chroma? Thanks, Tony. Uh, you can just check me out. Check out the Baby Boys on Spotify. Oh, yeah. The new album's great. Love guys. that. Oh, thank Love you. It. Thank you. Patty Reagan and uh, the Baby Boys. Is that right? Pat Reagan and the Baby Boys? Yes. Uh, we're actually just the Baby Boys, but just Pat Reagan is in it. It's me, Pat, and And Joel. it's the Baby Boys for those yes, people on Spotify? Yes, the Baby Spotify? Boys on Spotify. There you go. And last but not least, the backbone of the band, Joelberg Joel Jimenez, everyone. He's Mostly Sorry on social media. His new podcast, Mostly Sorry, is out. What else, Joel? 
Yeah, we're going to drop it on Wednesday this time since we'll be working tomorrow. So we'll see you Wednesday at 5, me and David Deary. I love yeah. it. Big thanks to David Deary also. Yes, big thanks to David Deary. Um, you know, he's got a uh, he's got a tough gig and uh, he really helps us out tremendously on this show. And uh, sometimes, oh, there he is. He's right there. I oh, I, I didn't even recognize him. Um, and we love him very much. It's such an important role, and we care about him deeply. He's he's at MF David Deary on all things social media. Catch him uh, working with the great Donnell Rawlings, and uh, he's really good on Joel's podcast too. Yeah, he's great on Joel's podcast. Works with all the funniest people, and uh, we absolutely love David Deary. He's a great comedian, a worldly traveler. And uh, just an overall great guy. He keeps us safe. He's strict about the coronavirus. I remember when we were driving to the ice house that first week, and I was saying all this shit's bullshit and everything, and you're like, no, Tony, this is a really big deal. People are getting really sick. I have friends in Italy, and I'm like, this fucking nerd is scared of this disease. And it turns out you were completely correct. And I was a, uh, I was an asshole. Yeah. Nah. I've been an asshole a few times. Hey, guys, check out my uh, show, Virtual Red Band. If you like virtual reality, I play a bunch of virtual reality, and it's uh, fun. Same with me. My new side project, Roastmaster Class, is booming over there. I just had an episode with uh, Sarah Tiana Drop where we went over for the first time ever anywhere the unheard Ann Coulter script that uh, was controversial and talked about on many platforms but never heard before. We went over it, and... Uh, Fun episodes out. Benji Aflalo, David Lucas. Uh, this week I'm interviewing Jesse Joyce, the former writer for the late, great Greg Giraldo. So everything roasting is happening over there. That's at patreon.com slash Hinchcliffe for that exclusive content. Thank you, Gino, again, Speedweed, and uh, Better Box Studios for keeping us holed up during the majority of the pandemic. Ryan G, Belt.com for Prince, and Michael Lair Comedy for all the coolest merch and thank you, audience, in the Comedy Store. And the Comedy Store. Thank you, everybody. Oh,